Hello, everyone, and yes, welcome back to our June edition of our Bullhorn Academy webinar. Today, we are going to be taking a look at our workflow icons and most specifically how we can customize our workflow icons. Throughout today's webinar, we're going to highlight exactly what they are, where, and how administrators can customize these icons, and also, too, how we can use them to mirror our company's workflow. Now, throughout these three points, we'll also go over some troubleshooting tips and tricks. And also, as a brief reminder, this webinar is geared towards administrators. Administrators, you're going to have access to the features we'll be navigating to here today. Now, if you are not an administrator of your system, please still feel free to stick around and take a few notes, and you'll get a behind-the-scenes look on how these actions are taken. All right, so first things first, we got to highlight what are workflow icons. Well, these workflow icons, also known as breadcrumbs, will allow you to quickly see the state of your records. These icons are going to display across the top of your records in Bullhorn, whether they be candidate records, contact records, companies, or jobs. So what these icons do, they highlight when a specific action is completed for those associated records. Now those actions or triggers that highlight these icons, they're going to consist of adding notes against a record, adding appointments such as interviews, and even to other workflow items like placements. And we'll highlight a few other actions that can populate these icons as well. Now the things you see on my screen here, you are not limited to just these options. Bullhorn will allow you the availability to tailor these breadcrumbs that appear to really help you track the milestones throughout your workflow that you and your team document. Now these icons here, notice how I have the John Morris profile, essentially the breadcrumbs pulled up on each side. So these breadcrumbs that appear here are blank until those actions take place. When they take place, they become highlighted for us. And notice here a couple things. Check mark. Well, a check mark indicates one. Two and above, that count will increase for us. So you're always going to see not just when those actions have taken place, but also to how many times. Now, we all know that different companies utilize different workflows. And because of this, we've recently given you, the administrator, the ability to customize these icons yourself. This this puts you in complete control of your database and allows you to work and your team to work exactly how your company defines that workflow. Now, as an example here, the workflow icons can be customized to light up, as I mentioned earlier, when a note is added to the record. Based off the note type, we can have those breadcrumbs populate. They can also be populated when a task is associated to a record based off the task type, can highlight the breadcrumb. And finally, when an appointment takes place. As an appointment takes place and that time has passed, then we're going to see that breadcrumb highlight as well. Okay. Now, of course, what you see on my screen right now, this is just a small sample of what you can achieve with your workflow icons. So let's dive on into Bullhorn and show you exactly what all can we do? As we're signing into Bullhorn through our main view, I want to highlight before we talk about customization is how we can familiarize ourselves with the current setup. If I run a fast sign for my candidate here, John Shepard, let's take a look at his profile. While I am highlighting here a candidate profile, again, I want to remind us that these breadcrumbs we are going to see not just in candidate but also in companies contacts, and jobs. So think about your workflow. What certain milestones do we need to document and pinpoint throughout these profiles? Now, as a best practice, as we look at these breadcrumbs here, we typically recommend, as I've been using the word milestones, use these breadcrumbs to track your milestones. We don't want to have breadcrumbs going all the way across the screen. We want to highlight specifically what is it that we need to see right away when looking at these profiles. Now, as we're looking at John here, I can see he's had some activity logged against his record, as denoted by the icons that are lit up. 
Looks like here, John, we've been pretty busy with him lately. Now, since I've been working with John closely, I can see the workflow counts, including the two interviews he's gone on. But I also know that he has had two second interviews lined up for two different positions. You see, my company, they always hold two interviews with candidates prior to extending an offer to them. However, judging by these icons, I can't exactly see that those two interviews have been created. If I take a look here through the activity tab, which tracks the behind the scenes and also to the end result of these shortcuts through these icons, the related appointments tells me that I can see his first two interviews and also here, those two second interviews I knew he had but couldn't quite see right away through those breadcrumbs. Now, although I've been thinking to myself, you know, it'd be really great to see that additional breadcrumb tracking those second interviews. As it turns out, my boss just let me know he also wants to be able to view them directly from the overview tab. It's a win-win. Now, with the ability to customize our workflow icons, that's not going to be a problem. Now, before I talk about adding those new icons, I just want to remind ourselves, we got to be sure to identify for the breadcrumbs we want to add, how are those breadcrumbs going to be populated? Because I mentioned earlier, they can be triggered by notes. They can be triggered by tasks and appointments as well, as well as workflow. Now thinking of interviews, I know that my interviews are scheduled by creating appointments. So I got to make sure that I have the appointment type for second interview, which I do here. Now anytime you want to have a breadcrumb highlighted, you got to make sure you have the corresponding system setting, note type, appointment type, task type, to help populate that icon. Now, if that, that I, well, I should say if that system setting for second interview didn't already exist, I'd be able to go into my system settings and create that appointment type for me. Now, don't worry. If you can't remember the exact system setting where you need to enter your trigger, we do have documentation we'll be sending out after today's class that has you covered. We're going to email that out to everyone in attendance here today, so that way you can get the how-tos and the hands-on and the how-to access and make these changes. Now, since I do already have second interview as a system setting, I'm now going to create the workflow icon here, the moment you've been waiting for. So, as I access my menu slide out for tools, this is going to take me into system settings. Now the system settings here, we have several settings located in this area. So what I want to do in my variable is type in the word workflow. All right. Now since these settings are customized here, we want to be mindful when making adjustments to these settings. All adjustments made will occur immediately in Bullhorn. And you also want to ensure anytime you're making changes to system settings, workflow content, be sure to, to relay that information to your team, so that way we can make sure everyone is on the same page. Now, as I take a look here, notice I have the workflow steps for the candidate profile, contact, company, jobs, because I mentioned they each have their own breadcrumbs. All right. Now, if I take a look at this arrow, arrow for candidate workflow, now I start off in the candidate profile, so let's see what this expanded view shows us. I can see exactly from this view how the icons are structured to display on my candidate records. Now, if you're like me, then the screen might feel a little overwhelming. So let's run through it a little bit before I start making any changes. Let's start off with the value section here. This value section is where we can add or remove the breadcrumbs to our records. Now, notice how some values have, bre have brackets, some don't. Some even have colons here. Now, the format is important because it determines how each of these workflow icons will behave. Now, as an example, notice I got pre-screen here. Entering a word such as pre-screen, this is going to populate the breadcrumb icon when a note with the action of pre-screen is added to that candidate profile. So when there's no brackets, that essentially gives us the hint that that icon is going to be populated anytime we add a note. 
Now you might think, Terry, how am I supposed to know that? Take a look at this hint section right below. This is going to list all of the available options for us and how we can format each one, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. Notice how I have six values here in this value section, each being comma separated with no spaces in between. That's because each value is a workflow icon and a comma signifies the start of a new icon. Let me take you back to John's profile for a moment. Notice here, I do have the same six workflow icons. Pre-screen, submission, client submission, all the way down to placement. So in my system settings, notice I can see they are in the exact same order as I highlighted in the profile. All right, so the values here, they directly correlate with the breadcrumb on the record itself. All right. So we got to make sure we identify the order that we want them to appear in. I don't want to throw in my second interview here in the end because that really wouldn't make too much sense. Go from placement to second interview? No. So we want to make sure we understand the order that we want those breadcrumbs to appear in. Now this is going to bring me to another best practice for you because anytime you make changes to these system settings, always double check your work. Make sure you updated the area you intended to in the location you intended to as well. All right, now as I mentioned earlier, this hint section, it's going to show the available options we can use to customize our icons. And there are a lot of options we can use. Now if you find the hint doesn't provide enough guidance, again, we are going to be sending out documentation, also available in our Bullhorn Resource Center, that covers each possibility in greater detail. And again, we'll send that after the webinar concludes. But now that we take a look here, I mentioned when there's no brackets, we're adding based off a of note type. So with that being said, we also need to ask ourselves, how are we going to track other actions, including that second interview? Well, being able to see through the hint, if it's related to the workflow, we're going to use our brackets. If it's tied to an appointment, we got to make sure that we include the fact that we are having an interview being scheduled and we want to highlight well exactly what value is being entered into the appointment. All right. So being that second interviews, much like first, are going to be tracked by creating appointments. We need to create the trigger that's going to highlight the breadcrumb in this area. All right. So in this case, our trigger will be appointments with a type of second interview. We already have one, so now we got to highlight a second here. So if I look at my appointments, I can see the way that it has it populated for me. As I use my option here, let me highlight appointment as it provides an example and choose the location where I want it to appear. Make sure I copy. Perfect. All right. Now notice how I also add that comma directly behind the value that I just pasted in. Now this blank space is not going to populate much for me. So what I want to identify is the fact that it is a second interview. Now I can have spaces in between the words second and interview because that's how it's identified in the appointment type. Okay. Now remember, depending on the icon you want to add, the value may be formatted a little differently. So always refer to the hint section below. All right. Now, as we are kind of getting familiar with the hint values, your workflow, I always recommend copying your existing values to a notepad just in case you got to revert back to your previous icon steps. Okay. Now, I just entered my value. Okay. I can see here I got second interview reflected in the area behind interview but before offer extended. All right. So as we take a look at the updates we've made, I have it identified the way I wanted to, so I'm going to go ahead and save my changes. All right. Now as I save, through the change I made, much like any major system change we make in Bullhorn, we should always refresh our login so we can view the latest changes. Now to do this, I'm simply just going to hit F5 on my keyboard here. That is going to reload, take it from the top, so now, let me go back to my John Shepherd record.
And if I pull up John's profile, I now have that second interview icon highlighted for me. All right, so a prime example, and as you get the hang of it, very easy way, too, to create additional breadcrumbs for things you need to track. Again, those milestones. So I got second interview here. Now, if we recall, when we looked at that activity tab and I said, hey, I know he's got those two interviews and he has two second interviews. Well, wait a minute. I mentioned check mark indicates one. And I know John definitely had two second interviews scheduled the last time I looked at his record. So why is only one appearing here? Let me take a look at the activity and the related appointments to see what gives. As I take a look, yeah, related appointments, I got four. Let me expand out. I can see here, yeah, he does in fact have two second interviews. If I go into this first one here, I see, yeah, this appointment has already taken place. That must be the one that it's counting. Therefore, if I take a look at the second one for July 3rd, oh, you know what? This interview hasn't taken place yet. That's why I don't see it triggered through that breadcrumb. Okay, so it's when those steps are accomplished, when pre-screens are done, when submissions have been documented, when interviews have taken place. So once July 3rd hits, that interview takes place, you bet you're going to see that breadcrumb highlight now to the number two. And it will track that the fact it has been done. All right, now that's important to note, especially if you're adding any other breadcrumbs that track appointments. All right, so again, appointments workflow icons, they will not light up until after the appointment has taken place. Okay? Therefore, we won't be able to see who has had an interview, not who has an upcoming interview. All right. Awesome. Now, in addition to that, remember how I said that the icons can include note types, appointment types, workflow, and even tasks. Through that tools menu for system settings, I want to specify once more, the hint is going to give us the information on how we can format each of those breadcrumbs and identify how they are going to be populated. In addition to that, we got to make sure that what is populating that information exists in Bullhorn. For example, note values. Well, I'm not going to be able to see the pre-screen icon highlighted unless I have a note action for a pre-screen. So you've got to make sure the note actions exist, the task types exist, the workflow statuses exist. So those settings will need to be in place, and then you can create the breadcrumbs to then reflect that those actions have been done. Further, while we did focus primarily within the candidate entity, I want to highlight that also too, again, Contacts, companies, and jobs also have their own workflow icons. From submissions down to placements, by default, Bullhorn provides those out of the box. Contacts, on the other hand, we might have breadcrumbs for client visits. So any client visits we need to track identified by a note type. Should you need to add any other custom breadcrumbs to other entities, this is your location. Admins, through your tools menu, system settings, we have workflow. And you can expand out your view, find your hints, and create your settings from there. Always check your work. Be sure to refresh. You should see those updates reflected automatically. If you do not, revert back to the documentation we'll be sending to you after this webinar concludes. Today we covered a lot of material, including what are our workflow icons. I mentioned also known as breadcrumbs, how they are customized, we used an example of creating second interviews using those breadcrumbs, and also, too, went through some troubleshooting tips and tricks along the way to make sure we're updating the areas we absolutely intended to. I hope everyone enjoyed this month's Academy webinar, was able to gain some additional tips and highlight how can I track certain workflow milestones. As mentioned, we will have documentation provided in our resource center explaining the workflow icons, how we can customize, and you'll be receiving that momentarily. If you do run into any issues along the way and you are an account or support contact, please do not hesitate to contact our support team. You can use our live chat, submit a ticket, or reach out over the phone line. Let's go ahead. Let's turn it on over to some Q&A. 
All right, thank you, Terry. Uh, we had a lot of great questions come in, so we're going to try to cover as many as we can right now. The first question is from Kim, and she asked, how do you add the offer extended breadcrumb to your process for the candidate? Yeah, so offer extended, great question. So as I mentioned earlier, hints are going to tell us how do we document these breadcrumbs based off what is it that's triggering it, a note, a task types, workflow. Well, when it comes to offer extended, you can actually see through my screen, I have one here. When it comes to a workflow status, for example, specifically things that fall under the update button in your workflow, offer extended, uh, rejections, we want to include the word in brackets, the word submission, colon, and then add in the status that you're needing to capture. And again, you can use these in the hints. You can copy and paste them. Just remove the blank space and then put in the status that you're wanting to trigger or track through that breadcrumb. Just remember no spaces unless the type or the, uh, the action itself has spaces in the word. But between the colon, between the commas, no spaces. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, we had another question from Marsha asking, what is the difference between a submission and a client submission? Ah, okay. So submission and client submission. Submission I want you to think of as an internal submission where you have, say, just for the ease of uh, explanation, we have our recruiting team in sales. Sales says, hey, I got a new job. Recruiting team, let me know if you have any candidates. Well, internal submission is essentially, in a sense, recruiting saying, hey, I got this great candidate that could be a good fit. I'm going to create an internal submission. So we're submitting internally to sales. And then as sales reviews the candidate, they may decide, yeah, actually, they are a great candidate. Let's submit to the client, which would lead to a client submission. So submission is an internal submission where we are internally reviewing, debating whether we're ready to send to the client or not. And then client submission is the act of submitting to the client. Awesome, thank you. Uh, we had a question from Eliza saying, can these workflows generate reports? So the workflows, the workflows themselves don't generate reports. However, we do have some out-of-the-box reports that do tackle the workflow. Now, the reports that we have, essentially, the reports we have report on our default workflow. So pre-screens, submissions, client submissions, interviews, offers, placements. Basically, it's everything you see on my screen here. Now, the reports, they report on that default workflow. So if you add any customized breadcrumbs, those won't reflect on our standard reports. But that can be achieved if you guys have Bullhorn Canvas or our marketplace partner Insight Squared, then those would reflect your custom breadcrumb icon items or your custom workflow settings. But also, just to take that a step further, your submissions list, it's not exactly a report, but I like to refer to it as ad hoc reporting, any of your lists in Bullhorn, in fact, where you can see who is in any current status. So if I want to see someone that is in the uh, offer extended and submitted status, you can use that list. And then also admins, you have the ability to export your list. So that's what I mean as ad hoc reporting, utilizing filters in your list to see, well, who's currently in any given status. You can apply other filters as needed, and then export a CSV. So it's kind of a two-part answer. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Uh, we had a question from Karen asking, how do we turn on the lead workflow and opportunity workflow in our setting, in our system? So if yeah, if that question was geared more towards I don't see leads or opportunities, then you can just depend it on your additional bullhorn. If you are on the Enterprise Edition, then you would, you should essentially see leads and opportunities as the icons through your menu slide out. And when you do have those entities enabled, you should easily see them. When you type in the word workflow, lead and opportunity will also be there. So this is going to be dependent on the additional bullhorn that you're on. Uh, Enterprise Edition will have the leads and opportunities. If you are not on Enterprise Edition, you can reach out to your bullhorn sales contact. 
Awesome, thanks. Uh, another question, can I associate multiple triggers per workflow icon? For example, am I able to have one workflow icon light up when a note and task are added to a record? Mm, good question. So the breadcrumbs, they are actually limited to one action. So they can only be triggered by a note or a task. No two to one breadcrumb. So it is unique. Great. Uh, we had a question from Beth asking, can you search by a candidate workflow step, for example, candidates in second interview, or can you only search by status? Yeah, so with the area I navigated to earlier, this is also going to address that question. So your submissions list, again, through your menu slide out, you have submissions. You might have it labeled as uh, short lists or matches, just dependent on your company's terminology. But that list is going to allow you to track any submissions that have been documented in Bullhorn. Because when you create a submission, let me pull up this profile quick. When you create a submission, that is going to essentially begin the process to get sense of the client, schedule interviews, ultimately leading up to the placement. And submissions, they always include a specific candidate and a specific job. So in the submissions list, you will have candidate and candidate status job and job status. So as a personal preference in this list, I take that status column, just plain status. I take this and drag it to the far left hand side of my screen because just like any list, you can apply filters. And to see everyone that is in a second interview, you can come into the status here, highlight the status, and see who is currently in a second interview. Great, thank you. We had another question come in uh, asking, does updating a workflow icon change the numbers that are tracked against that icon? Does updating a workflow icon change the numbers that are tracked? So in regards to the breadcrumbs here, if the interview has since been updated to a second interview, we're not going to see the interview button revert back to one. So no, it is not going to change the numbers that are tracked here. These numbers that are tracked are going to stay to always reflect the full history of workflow and action ever taken against that record. So no, you're going to see the total counts here. Great, thanks. We had a question come in from Alex asking, can you do custom workflow icons by track within one of the record types? So for example, have one version of a workflow icons for track one and opportunity records and a different version for track two of opportunity records. Ah, good question. Okay. So opportunity tracks, job tracks. So the system settings, notice we just have the one. So job opportunity. So it is going to be for each. It's not unique per tracks. Great, thank now, you. If you did, oh. Yeah, I was say, if you did have different workflows, you might want to look into private labels if you have different um, different workflows, maybe by industry or anything like that. But yep, for, for tracks, there's no individual workflow per track. It's all for one entity. Awesome, thanks. I think we have time for one more question. We had one in come from Jessica asking, are there workflow icons for attaching a file? Yeah, actually you can. So through those same system settings, and thanks so much for bringing that through, you can absolutely have one for files. So just like we had set up for appointments, you can even have files. So maybe file, uh, maybe for onboarding you were expecting a particular document to be received by a candidate. Well, if you upload that file into their candidate profile through the Files tab with a specific file type, you can absolutely have a breadcrumb highlighted for that purpose. So we just got to make sure the file type exists through your file type list. And then you can copy this value, choose where you want it to appear, and then identify what is the name of the file. Again, no spaces. No uh, spaces between commas or anything like that. What's the file name or the status? And then have it reflect there. So if I have maybe 
signed as an example. There we go. So it's the file type. And again, the file type would just need to exist in your file type list. Great. Thank you, Terry, and thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, stay tuned for next month's training webinar. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.